next presenter is Doug Harvey. He's an associate professor of instructional technology at Richard Stockton College. Um, his talk, Teaching Critical Thinking Through Online Writing and Debate, describes a scaffolded approach to online debate that fosters more authentic engagement that is, than is usual in the typical asynchronous online discussion. Thanks. Um, uh, the course that I'm talking about, um, I, uh, Stockton is a, a liberal arts college, now it's a university, we just changed. Um, I don't know how many people are local, you may have read some of the stuff that has been going on there lately. Um, if you want to hear more, I can tell you all about it. <laughs> um, it's a, a general studies course, um, so our general studies courses are meant for all students. Um, they had to take, I think, I believe, uh, five of them throughout their entire um, Stockton career. And this course was a general studies in the arts and humanities course, and it's open to um, anybody from first year students on to, to seniors. And I usually get kind of a blend of, of that. Um, it's a, devoted to learning the ways in which digital technologies impact society. So I usually give them a bunch of different topics related to um, how technology impacts their, their society and, and their lives, and then they respond in various activities. Um, it's an online course at this point. I've taught it as a face-to-face -face course. I've taught it as a hybrid course. I'm thinking about going back to a hybrid course, and maybe I'll talk about, talk about that in a little bit. Um, the goal here, though, is to add a critical thinking piece. I was part of a critical thinking institute at Stockton and chose to do this course as my course where I pulled in the, uh, blend in, into the critical thinking. And I used the work of Brookfield and Nosich and the Foundation for Critical Thinking, if you're familiar with them. And added the learning goal to think critically about the impact of technology on individuals and society. And I had been trying to do this in this course for quite some time, and it's, it's always sort of a hit or miss, and that's what I was finding and what, what I wanted to try to address with this online component um, and, and this critical thinking activities was to try to get them to be more um, critical in their thinking about the way technology was impacting them. So what I did was I added some activities to their online assignments that they then wrote blog posts about. So I did four things. Um, if you're familiar with some of the critical thinking work, um, these are all activities that you would use in a face-to-face -face classroom. And I sort of tried to adapt them into this online environment. Uh, first was the circle of voices, which was uh, used in a discussion forum. And that's the idea where everybody goes around and they share their posts or their ideas about the topic. And I broke them into um, uh, small groups of uh, five or six. And so they did that for the first uh, topic, which was entertainment in the digital age. And we did Chalk Talk for the second one. And Chalk Talk is that, is that uh, concept map that's up at the top there. And what that was was um, an online uh, tool called Kaku, if you're familiar with that. And what it did was it allowed those students to go in and um, create a collaborative concept map, essentially, of, of the topic. Third one was posted appreciation, which in the physical classroom would be about writing out a bunch of post-its and posting it up on, a, on, a, on the wall about the topic. And then people would go around and they'd comment and write posts back um, on the board. And so I found an online tool that basically allowed you to do the same kind of thing. This is a Padlet wall um, that I used. And, I, and if, I get, if I have the time, I'll, I'll try to show it to you. If not, I can always show it to you on the side. Um, and so I had students do that. So in their groups, they would go through and they would come up with the ideas and they'd post it. And then they would go through and read each other's posts and they'd comment. And then the last one was a peer critique tool in which they wrote um, on a topic. In this case, I think it was privacy. Uh, and then they would give each other uh, peer feedback. So in their group, they would have a peer co a colleague who would write back to them about what they were talking about. And they had a, a critique. Um, format that I gave them to, to do that with. So they had to come up with three things that they thought the person did very well, three, three things they thought they could do better, and things like that. And then what I do is I provided assertions on each of these topics. So I might tell them that I want, I would say, uh, uh, you know, the privacy that we lose from, uh, from online tools um, is mitigated by the fact that it provides more community, right, or something like that. And then they would have to respond in their blog to that. And then they would use those activities that they did with their, with their groups to then inform their blog writing. Okay. And then they had a final debate that they had to do in groups. So they would have to go on. Most of them chose to use this asynchronous text based, so they would have to post their, their debate. Um, I tried to use a modified um, debate thing in which there would be, uh, 
a pro and a con, and then the rest of the group would jewelry. And so the pro would write the pro side of whatever the topic was that they chose. Um, the Obviously, the con would be the other side. And then the jury members would have to explain why they voted the way they voted. And then we did this in a two-round deal. So they would first have to come up with their opening argument, do the jury's questions back to them, respond to those jury questions, and then post their final um, answers. Obviously, the debate team, the two, the two sides, had a little more work to do. <laughs> um, and I tried to account for that. One group did decide to do an online synchronous debate, and I'll try to show that to you um, in a sec, which I thought was an interesting way to do it. Um, we used Google Hangouts, and this group felt confident enough in, in their ability to, uh, to do it that way. And I, I thought that was an interesting um, choice. Um, results, and I, I'm going to jump into the course in a second. Um, I'm still getting numbers from a pre-post critical thinking survey that we did um, as part of the institute. Um, so I don't know what that is. Of course, just finished like two weeks ago, so I'm, I haven't gotten the data yet. Um, the things, though, from my end, I saw it were largely solid in the way they showed some growth in critical thinking from the beginning. You know, the students tended to write less. They tended not to support their views with anything. It was more opinion-based. And then by the end, I felt like most of them had gotten to the point where they were supporting their references and they were making points, and they were also understanding the other side's viewpoint. One group did have problems with uh, time management. They didn't post very well. Out of the six groups, um, well, actually, we started with seven. One dropped out because most of their students dropped the course. Um, there were five that were really solid, and then one that sort of just lost it. I mean, they, they just didn't have a real leader. But most of them seemed to have pulled it together. And the synchronous debate, um, if I can get this to show. I want to show a lot of this. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, technology improving the learning outcomes for students. I, uh, I wanted to start by saying, um, picking a quote that I took from an article on education.com. And that says that as more and more classrooms invest in the latest of technologies, test scores have seemed to have stayed the same over time. So I found that really interesting. And okay, I don't go through the whole thing. It's you know, long as you would be bored. Um, but this was interesting because these students actually did their final debate in this format, which I thought was was a different way to do this. Um, of course, it was in Blackboard, obviously, uh, like so many of our institutions, unfortunately, were gone <laughs> with Blackboard. Um, and so the course was basically broken into these different segments. They did entertainment. And I would usually provide them with Symbaloo um, links to, to go through the material, and I would give them the topic um, within here. And here's the, here's the question I gave them was technology is greatly expanded the entertainment. So this was the assertion I would make, and then they would, um, then they would respond in their blogs. Let me show you what a blog looked like. So this is how they would write their um, blogs, and the student would provide references. And they had to do this five times um, throughout. So it was really a writing assignment. And the reason, what I thought was really interesting was when I was starting to work on this in the Critical Thinking Institute, we had a discussion. And one of my colleagues from psychology who does a lot of online um, teaching, I had said, I really want to use the discussions you know, to, to get them more involved with the material. But whenever I use online discussions, I tend to get not a whole lot of deep thinking. You know, I'll get a couple of posts and maybe like that. But for the most part, I wasn't getting the kind of depth I wanted. I said, what I really want is for them to discuss. And he said, they don't see it as discussion. It's a writing assignment. Right? In other words, students are going to post because it's a writing assignment. It is a writing assignment. And that's, that, that's when it came to me, like, right, that's my problem. I'm trying to use this online discussion forum for discussion when it doesn't really do that. <laughs> or at least it doesn't do it well for the most part. So what I wanted to do is try to you know, make this more of a writing assignment, in, in a sense. But, but then also then allow them to have that final sort of debate aspect, and then hopefully I would get the kind of um, critical thinking that I was looking for. And I thought that this actually did a pretty good job of it. Um, let me go back here for a second. That's the blog, and here's what the discussion groups look like. So I would post to them um, what, what they had to do, 
and then they would have to come back and provide thoughts about that or use different pieces of it. Um, and so they, they would talk about that. And so this is what their post intended to look like. This is a fairly active group, so it was, it was good. And they made some uh, comments related to it. And eventually they would post on the Padlet wall um, their thoughts. And that's generally how the course went. Um, so what did I, I learn from that? What I learned from that generally was that it does, I thought, I thought it did it to some degree, but I do think it still needs that prodding. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's very difficult. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I want to kind of go back to a hybrid. I'm thinking what I really want to do is have these activities um, used as the as the blended piece of this, right? And to kind of allow, allow that to be um, something they do outside of class, and then to use the in class time for that sort of debate or that 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 back and forth discussion. Um, and so I think that this course actually works better as a hybrid, not as a not as a, a completely online course. Um, although the students did tend to, to like the course, I mean, and they, they tend to like the online aspect of it. Um, but you know, I did I did have the problem with one group, and I did, you know, I, I still kind of feel like there's more we could do. And if I'm there physically at the same time, I can get more um, more activity out of that. Um, we're going to take questions afterwards. So. Okay. So um, I'm done. Let's <laughs> <laughs> move on.